like this. Yeah. Open my head too. Yeah. Oh yeah, dude. <laughs> <laughs> This weighed, I want to say, the whole side was like 50, baby. Oh I'm sorry, not the whole side, the, the whole animal. The whole so this is a beef high quarter. Uh, this came off a uh, Angus Hereford cross um, from Youngman Farms up in Walcott. Uh, this is where a lot of our beef comes from. Uh, most all of our sides come from Youngman Farms. Um, it's by around, I'd say, 18 to 24 months of age. Uh, it was slaughtered. It was slaughtered last Tuesday. Uh, I'm hung for about a week and uh, it was given yesterday. This is a cut that's called uh, the rose meat or matable in Spanish. It's a very popular cut down in Argentina. They use it to make like almost like a brujol type cut. Mm. So the flank comes from about here down through here. You can see on the other side of it there. We got a little bit of fat we've got to remove before we start cutting into things. This is your spider steak, top round. Your tenderloin is hidden in here. And then this is your strip. This would be the sirloin section. And then we'll get into the other cuts as we go. Yeah. So first things first is we're gonna uh, separate this rose meat. Very tough, yeah. Um, you can see it's a little discolored. In the slaughterhouse, um, you know, because it hangs for a week and because this muscle sits on the exterior of the uh, of the carcass, then it oxidizes pretty quickly. Yeah. All right. Next up, we'll take off the flank. Flank there. And then there's a kind of a big fat pocket here. It's called the cod fat. And we remove that so we can get a better look eventually at our tri-tip. That's a that's like a butcher's cut, right? The bob fat? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The bob fat's a great cut. Similar to a skirt or a flank steak for that matter. It's a long grain meat, hmm. um, but much more marbled than those two, yeah, generally yeah. speaking, and larger. Yeah, I bought some from you. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. All right, now we're gonna remove some of this kidney fat. This can kind of be a pain in the neck sometimes. Okay, I it. Oh, that's bad. It's gonna get right in here like this. Give that a look for the little seam. Right up by the head of the tenderloin. See that there? Mm -hmm. Make my mark. Come straight down. Sorry about that. Tip there. Tons of fat. To clean. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh my god. And then we uh, render it. Yep. We make your towel. Towel is hard to find for some people. Like I always recommend people cook with that. And right. They don't know where to find it. And the only thing that's available in the store is like, you know, like I sent you a picture one time. It's like 14 bucks. <laughs> right, for 10 long. ounces. Totally. You know? Right. It's like, what? <laughs> Crazy. Yeah. And I'm like, man, go talk to your butcher. Like, <laughs> yeah. I guarantee they're loaded. All right, so this is our tenderloin here. It runs along the underside of this bone here. These are your lumbar vertebrae, so the bottom of your back. And then this is the beginning of your sacrum vertebrae, which is your tailbone, right? 
So the strip loin starts here, ends here. The tenderloin ends here, or I should say starts here, and ends right up by this H bone here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna come in, find my bone, make a cut straight across this cut here, it's called the Merlon, which is just a little side muscle on the top round. Never even heard of that before. You got my ball joint right there. I know I'm in good shape. I'm gonna clip the nerve. And I come right down the each bone here, and then down the back bone. Got two separate passes. And then I start to pull. What's your tenure line? Very nice. All right, next up. I've got to separate my strip loin from the top sirloin. So there's a natural um, articulation right here at the end of the H bone to where the very last lumbar vertebrae meets the second vertebrae. And so what I do is I'm going to come right in here in between those two. I'm going to mark the underside of the H bone, just like that. Then I'm going to come across and do a cut all the way to the back. Take another. Yeah. Are they like drained of blood? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You'll see when we do the four quarter. Yeah. The very first muscle that I take off or that I kind of move out of the way is this muscle that runs down their jugular. Yeah. And you'll see it's just kind of full of blood. Interesting. Next, we've got to remove the spider stake from the H bone. This one's, uh, I've got to make a really deep cut, okay. and that knife's just not long enough. Yeah, yeah. Now we've got to remove our H bone. That is one big bone. <laughs> How many of these do you break down today? Uh, we do one whole beef a week. Okay, so it'd be four of these? Two of these. And a two to the four quarter. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then during the holidays, usually a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. And they do this differently, like in massive, you know, slaughterhouses oh, yeah. for a lot of it's, grocery uh, stores. Yeah, a lot of mech you know, mechanized, right? Yeah, yeah. To a certain extent. You said eighteen months. To, right. Yeah. That seemed. I don't know why I thought that was like veal age. Um. It's still pretty young, considering. Yeah, yeah. Like in other countries, they'll raise their animals to uh, an older age. Is there a difference in the beef? Yeah, it, I mean, the older it gets, the tougher it gets. Oh, okay. Uh, we 
Is there a top round? Bottom round. That's our sirloin tip here. So I've got a trace. Finally, the heel, I cut in just above the Achilles tendon. Gotta keep it intact so it doesn't fall off my hook. Mm. And then finally, careful when we come right at you with this knife. <laughs> That is something. Tender, tallow, and lard, and you put them next to each other. They look the exact same at the beginning, and then as they cool, for whatever reason, the lard like makes this little like indent into it. Huh. It'll go down like two or three inches. It's really weird. That is weird. I've never rendered my own lard. Lard is very soft. You can like stick your finger right into it. Whereas you go know, like tallow is super tough. Mm -hmm. A couple of these hooks. Mm -hmm. Always look for like a thick nerve or thick fat pocket mm -hmm. to hook it. Yeah. And just hook them and try to get two on one if you can. Okay. Two muscles on there. Oh. <laughs> this next part is already broken down into two sections. It comes in one piece, and then when we get it here, we take the rib off the forecourt. Mm. Um, I'll show you in a second. Yeah, it makes sense. We have you help it out the same way. extension of the brisket right here. Um, let's see. Then your chuck end. So where your chuck ends, your ribeye starts. The chuck eye is my favorite steak. So it's the same muscle as the ribeye, yeah. but it's ribs one through five. What's the difference? Like, it's a little bit tougher. Yeah. Okay, so like the further up the animal you go, the tougher it gets because okay. it starts to get into their neck region, etc. Mm. But right here, it's still nice and tender, and it's about half the price of ribeye. Mm -hmm. So this is a really great cut, um, an economy cut, so to speak. It's also really versatile. You can uh, cook it as a steak, or you can braise it. It's equally as good. Yeah. Um, so this is our brisket right here, our shank. This is this little muscle that runs right along the underside of the neck. And you can kind of tell it's really oxidized and there's some blood clotting here. This is when they slaughter the animal and they drain it. It comes all right through here. Mm. Uh, so this is your neck and then your chuck and then your chuck plate ribs. 
your short ribs, I should say. All right? So first thing we're gonna do is we've gotta separate this little muscle from the brisket so that when we remove the brisket a little bit, we have a better look at where the separation is. There's all sorts of you know, natural separations in the animal, mm. and you're constantly looking for them. Uh, it's important to seam them out accurately. So I'm just gonna remove it to about right there. And then I come up here, and I start to find the separation of what would be more or less the armpit of the animal. There's a little separation right back here. It comes on the back side of the animal, all the way down. And I come back to this side, and what I'm trying to do is remove the brisket in its entirety. Packer briskets, when you buy them at the supermarket, they have the large majority of the brisket, but they don't have the very tip of it, uh, which is called the bateau in French. And it's uh, where it comes to a point. Um, if you can remove it all uh, well, then that tip of the brisket is actually what's great for making bird dens, because it's much thinner than the rest and leaner. You gotta be careful separating it because you've got a bunch of muscles right behind it. It takes a little bit longer to do it this way. Yep. But it's the correct way to do it. I start to pull on one side and cut on the other. Look at him now. Here's the tip of that muscle right there. Mm -hmm. The mock tender is right behind it. And then I'm going to look for my blade bone. I'm going to make a C cut, just like that. What is all that that's like spider webs? That's just uh, different, it's like fascia it's called. Mm. I'm gonna be coming right at you Justin, just a second here. Good. And now, you get down on one knee. And here's our shoulder removed from the front, or the forecourt, I should say. So next thing we're going to do is remove the brisket, which is right in through here. So I find my seam. A very tiny separation right here. It's really interesting. It has like no odor. The beef? Yeah. yeah. Like, I can't even smell anything. Right. You think you'd be like carving up a body, you know? <laughs> it smell at least somewhat. But... You know, it's interesting is when there's a sick animal and you cut into one of the glands. Yeah. It can smell pretty, pretty interesting, bad. Yeah. It is interesting. All right, so now I'm just going to pull my brisket down. Assuming you're, help, you're using gravity in here? Yep. Yeah. Here's our brisket in its entirety with the tip. Right, so in the supermarket, you'll just see this, usually cut about right here. So you lose that tip end. Why? Just because it's more complicated to do it that way. It's a little more time consuming. Yeah. You know. And it's not really that big of a deal. Yeah, right. It's just one of those things that you're going to actually seam the muscles as opposed to cutting through them. Mm. Yeah. Short ribs are 
tough though because sometimes the animals are so fatty that like there's like no meat more than 50 percent of it is just total junk yeah right uh, like that end right there Lots see people it? say they're overrated man i i, I do think they're in yeah. terms of grazing cuts mm -hmm. Any cut that you cook long enough, as long as it's got a nice fat content to it, yeah. is going to be good. Oh, yeah. Through. Justin's gonna be busting into this a little bit. Now, we do the neck real quick. Yeah, it's hard to visualize like where we are. So um, these, are your, these are your cervical vertebrae right here. Okay. So the head was right here. Gotcha. This is your atlas bone, mm -hmm. the bone that pivots back and forth. So you've got seven cervical vertebrae before you move into the dorsal vertebrae. Like a dorsal fin, right? That's where it comes from. Mm. And then after that, you get into your lumbar vertebrae, which we saw in the fore, yep. the hind quarter, yep. and then into your sacrum. So right now, I'm gonna cut along the bottom side of the neck. Now you could remove it all in one, and on pork I would, but on beef, I go bone for bone just so I can get all the meat off, or as much meat off as possible, I should say. So anatomies are similar? They're identical. Across animals? Almost all identical. All Pork's a little bit different. Okay. Pork can have anywhere from 13 to 22 rib bones. As they grow, they'll grow more rib bones. Hmm. That's interesting. Yeah. So sometimes you get a pig, it's kind of nice when you get a pig with 22 rib bones, because yeah. that's more chops to sell. <laughs> Right. That's actually so weird. Preliminarily, just come right into here and separate the meat. And then I come back with my heavy cleaver. There it is. And I start to scratch down the bone like that. That really exposes the cartilage on the underside, which you'll see in a minute. This is a traditional way an old school way in France of removing all the neck bones is using your cleaver as a tool to get into the cartilage. How long did you train in France? Uh, it was a two year program. Um, there's a program, there's like school and apprenticeship at the same time. Hmm. So you beat your apprenticeship, like you started at the school for the first six weeks and they taught you the basics and then you went to your apprenticeship. And then usually one or two weeks each month, you went back to school. Interesting. All right, so again, we're doing this bone by bone. Mm -hmm. But this is truly the chuck muscle here. So you've got five rib bones, five dorsal vertebrae. The way to properly do this, the way I was taught, is we're gonna take a cleaver, and a cartilage, meets the bone, we're going to get pushed behind that and we're going to knock down with our cleavers so that we have all these bones completely clean. I'll just give you a quick example. So on this back side right here, you see that? Mm -hmm. okay. So what you're going to do is you're going to knock here Get that off the bone, the yep. cartilage off the bone, same thing there. And then you're just gonna go boom, boom, boom. Careful not to slam your knuckles into the bones. It happens. <laughs> yeah. Also, this bone right here, razor sharp. Be really? careful not feel that right there. Oh yeah, dude. That's so great. when you're hitting, you know, hold it yeah. at the end of the handle so that you don't go boom oh, which i've done before really and it really hurts all right all right let's do this like that yep see here that, get up get see that where it is right there 
Let's no. get that right there. Here? Yep. Yep, that's good. That's good. Okay, now I'll work your way all the way down until you can't go any further. Try to use the peak of the uh, Oh, okay, yeah. You go. Try to get right alongside the phone. Yep, there you go. Oh, yeah. That feels much better. Go all the way to the back now. All the way to that back one, the sharp one, Where? too. Here? Yep. Oh, yeah. All right, now flip it around and hit from that way. Just so you can get that front one. Yeah. All right, good. Now you see, there's absolutely no meat on the bone. It's all perfectly left on the muscle, which is ideal. Okay? Interesting. Next, I'm going to show you real quick how we're going to go about boning this. And we're going to go bone for bone on this one, too. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, you can see where the rib bones are. In between each rib bone, I'm going to make a C cut. All the way to the top, and all the way to the bottom, but not too deep. Okay. Only about half inch in. And then, this is one little half bone left here that you're in this. Scratch the remaining periosteum like that. I'm going to press these bones apart like this. Come right down here come into my articulation between the two rib bones, come up. And then I come down. And now there's another articulation right back here. Okay. Put it all the way through there, yep. Oh. All right, now up. Up, twist, right? Twist under the bone, yep, under the bone. Oh, okay. Yep. Perfect. Okay, yeah. perfect. Perfect. Good. You heard that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. snap. Yeah, good. Now, you're going to hold this like this, and again, pressing apart, you're going to lightly, shallow, cut right there. And this whole bone is going to start to kind of move. Okay. And you can't see it yet, but just start scratching right there. Okay. Here? Yep. Uh, yeah, that. A little bit further back. Yep. Sorry, come here. Oops. Oh. Angled in. Yeah, I see. Okay. Right there. Oh, this is holding up right there. there. Which one? This meat right there. This? Yep. See that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Where is this connected? There you go. Perfect. Oh, my God, dude. I was cutting yeah. in the wrong place. It's okay. I mean, it's tough. I mean, yeah, that's. Right? It takes a yeah. Practice to you know, kind of learn where it is. Mm -hmm. That's good though. Yeah. All right, so now repeat. So through here. Yep. Now, not too deep, remember. Yep, shallow cut. This is one of my favorite kind of, um, I should say, muscle groups of the whole animal. There's a bunch of really cool cuts in there um, that are not just for breathing. Uh, this cut right here, this is the Terrace Major. Um, I'm going to give you this cut to take home. It's like a little cut that's perfect. It's like the perfect portion for two people for a steak Caesar salad. Hmm. Um, it's also called uh, a tea tender or macro, not macro, like for tea tenders. Um, this would be a cut that I think your customers should be able to find relatively easily. Not necessarily as a, like, um, like every supermarket, but some supermarkets will carry it, and most butcher shops will. Hmm. Okay? Um, anyway. First thing we're going to do here is find this seam. I'm going to use the back of my knife. It's a cool technique to scrape the periosteum. 
So we're getting nice clean bones. which means like the, the brazing muscle. Mm. Um, it's a nice little uh, cut to use. You usually leave it with this nerve on, and as it cooks into the sauce, this will kind of break down a little bit and give body to your sauce because it's full of gelatin. Mm. Interesting. My favorite muscle, one of my favorite muscles, this is the heart of shoulder. And there are these little steaks I like should cook them up for. Uh, I think you, have you bought the hard shoulder steaks no. before? They're like little pan steaks, and they're great. Do you call them pan steaks? Because I've bought those before. Yeah. Well, pan steaks can be a couple different things. They can be sirloin tip. They can be harder shoulder. They can be not just about anything, but we usually cut them from a, like two to three different cuts. Gotcha. <laughs> It's got two separate muscles to it. We'll clean it up afterwards. But there's a top section to it, which is right here. And then the bottom section down here is great for a roast. So I'll show you that a little bit. You want to separate it from the flat iron. This is the, the blade muscle down here, which is an excellent muscle. The best cut for braising in beef, in my opinion. Also, one of the best steaks. You'll see. We'll clean that up afterwards too. But what I do is I get behind it, I score the periost in there, and then come underneath. Score there. And then I take my heavy cleaver. Crack that. <laughs> right off the clean. That's sick. <laughs> this is like 10 pounds. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. No, this no, would yeah. kill you. Yeah. It's straight up wet. So this is the flat iron right here, I should say. This is the blade muscle. After we remove the blade bone, the blade is right below it. We're gonna separate that from this cut that's called the Mercouza Brise in France. This cut right here. And the blade muscle, in my opinion, is the best cut for brazing on the animal. And when you separate the middle nerve out of it, the two flat iron sticks are fantastic sticks as well. Come on. There it is. Oh. Damn. Big piece of meat. <laughs> <laughs> These are huge. Yeah. So this is the rib section, right? Yeah. So this is in between the fore quarter and the hind quarter. This is your first ribeye here, your last ribeye, and then the strip starts. Then the inside. Yeah. 
you're just gonna come straight down. Try not to saw too much. You wanna make it like as clean a cut as you possibly can. Okay. The more you saw, the more like, like ridges you'll see through that, okay? Gotcha. So you're just gonna go like this. Right on this bone. Okay. As straight as you can, mm -hmm. right there. You're gonna go boom, as far as you can through. And then you're gonna switch to a kill grip mm -hmm. and pull all the way through down this bone here. All right, so you're pretty much just following this all the way down. Okay. So boom, switch, pull. Gotcha. Okay? Yes. <laughs> so here? Uh huh. You're just going right through? Well, You're going off the bone, off the bone. So just right there, yep. Okay, I got gotcha. you. Try to keep it straight. Try to keep the. So that there's no. It's just one cut. Alright. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> now, come back, find your line, and make another cut. Just follow that same, that same line. Now, one more. One more. Okay. That's the beginning of your tomahawk. Now, what you're gonna do, first you're gonna remove this top muscle here. Mm -hmm. There's a seam that'll peel right off. And then you're gonna kind of find the end of the tail fat of the ribeye. And you're gonna cut straight across on that side, all the way to the bone, and kind of marking the bone. And then you're gonna make the same cut on this side. And then I'm gonna show you how to Take this down, okay? So okay. first remove this muscle here. Start right here. Yeah, you're talking like this meat. Yeah, here it'll too. just come right off. Right. We'll see. But pull it away and find the natural seam. There you go. Yep. Okay. Now Find the end of your tail fat right there and cut a straight line. How do you see that it's... It's kind of see, well, I guess it's just, it's a feel thing, right? So like if you look at a ribeye, mm -hmm. like a, okay, yeah. like imagine what a ribeye yes. looks like, mm -hmm. you can kind of envision, envision where the tail fat ends, right? Okay. So we're going straight through? Yep. And you're going to hit the bone, that's okay. All right, now flip over. The exact same cut on the other side. And the same length, it's got one like the cuts to, to meet each other, right? Okay. So here, look over here. Yep. <clears throat> okay, good. Now I'm gonna show you how to take this down. What you're gonna do is you make a straight cut right down there. And you're using the back of your knife, you start to separate the periosteum. Like that, see that? Mm -hmm. And you can do the same thing on this side. And once you've freed that periosteum in its entirety from the front of the bone, we're gonna to start to peel it back and the whole thing is just gonna rip off. Gets right under. Uh -huh. Let me stop. A couple of the rag. That's good. You can actually probably start just like this. Mm -hmm. Get your fingers on both sides like that. Hold here and pull. Okay. Okay. Like this? Yep. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's alright. Nice. Yeah. Get a little shape. Tie it back together later on. Oh yeah. What's this oh. right here? 
That's the uh, that yellow. Yeah. That's the cervical nerve. Okay. Or tendon, I should say. Yeah. So that's what you know raises and lifts the head. Mm -hmm. All right. So now just clean up that little bit of uh, cartilage there. Just run your knife right along the side here. Okay. And then dig this out, and we're good to go. two different preparations. The upper part of this muscle is for pain stakes, the one I was telling you about mm -hmm. earlier. There's awesome pain stakes, they're nice and tender, they're well marbled. And then the lower part is a larger piece, and usually I square that off and I tie that into an oven roast to make like beef on black or yep. something like that, okay? This is your blade muscle. Um, this muscle is the best muscle, in my opinion, for brazing in the entire animal. Uh, there's a large nerve that also runs right through the middle, and as you cook it, it kind of breaks down, leaches into your sauce, gives your sauce more body, more flavor, etc. Um, this is a typical cut that they're using in France for beef burgundy. Okay, so it's a great braising cut. But it's also a great steak, too. It's the second most tender cut on the animal hmm. when you seam out the central nerve. And then that gives you two flat iron steaks. So this is where your flat iron comes from. Yep. Um, you can also cut it this way into blade steaks, but then you'll have that middle nerve in there. Okay. Uh, this is your shank muscle. Unfortunately, there's only one way to prepare this. I shouldn't say that. It can be braised or smoked for a long time to make it tender, but it's not a high heat muscle. You can not throw this under the grill. Yeah. It could be like shoe leather. Yeah. And then this is your chuck eye. So what we're going to do is we're going to separate the chuck flap from the eye itself. Mm -hmm. You can kind of see yes. what a rib eye would look like right yep. there, right? Or a chuck eye, I should say. We're going to separate the denver, or the parsley stick, as they call it in France, from the chuck eye. And then I'll show you if we're going to get uh, not only great steaks out of this, but also can use a, uh, a pot roast. Nice. OK, so dual, dual your stitch time. there. And then the same thing with the denver cut underneath. Um, that's a fantastic steak. It's also where boneless short ribs are most uh, used. Right. Um, all right, so here, come on over here. Yep. So these two muscles are being removed from this one, okay? Okay. So there's a nice separation there, and there's a nice separation here. But go slowly, because it gets a little screwy, okay? okay? Like right here. Essentially, you're going to start and follow this nerve mm -hmm. all the way down to the end, and then we're going to start to peel the peel whole the muscle down, okay? okay? Exactly. Hold your knife just like that. You got it. Now okay. careful, you yeah, and hold. Oh, see, I'm coming. Yeah. So I want to come here. Behind that, yeah. And now, as you're going, use your fingers to press apart the muscles so that you see them better. Okay. As I'm cutting, I'm pushing. Well, so you're going through that. I'm going through that little cartilage. Okay. And I'm pushing the entire time gotcha. to create separation. Yep. So just follow this thing right here, that thing? Yep, yep. Now, we're also gonna come right here. All right, follow that mm. right through here, okay? And remember, when you get here, this muscle is coming with. Okay. You have to be perfect. Seriously, this is difficult as fuck. 
I'm still too far, right? What's that? I'm, I'm still too far, right? I'm cutting into... Just follow that seam right there. You're good. Don't worry about it. <laughs> See, I'm taking meat. That's it. I'm taking meat with it. Don't worry. Let's see. You're good. Now I'll just draw a straight line right there. Yeah. It's hard, man. Because uh, you're like, well, timid on um, well, yeah. what you're cutting into. Well, right. Absolutely. Yeah. And you don't know where you're going, you know? Until you know. Let's clean up the rest here. <laughs> this is this one is a bit more complicated even yet. That is it feels it feels um I don't even know how to describe it. Like it's like tape or something mm -hmm. that you're pulling off. Now the flat iron here. You're very carefully you're gonna take your knife mm -hmm. and get right up under there. And you're gonna scratch so that all the meat on this bone stays on this muscle. Okay? Mm -hmm. So you just kind of start just like this. Be careful if you slip off, hold your hand like this, yeah. not like this. Yeah. And then just right down, okay? Mm -hmm. It's not like the most tender cut in terms of like obviously tenderloin would be better. Yeah. Sirloin would be better, but it's good. And it's a lot cheaper than both of those. There you go. Just hot and fast. Yeah, man, those are beautiful. These high heat, a little bit of butter, a little olive oil, two minutes aside. Time it, two yeah. minutes a second. Okay. All right? Yeah. I pull off and let rest a good 10 minutes and then cut. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Sounds good, dude. Thank you. Thank you, man. Yeah.